Hello guys and welcome to another episode where we create a game using Unity. Um, our first game is actually Pong, if you have are new to the stream. Um, first, uh, as always, I want to say thank you to all of the people watching my videos. Um, we now have 37 subscribers. Thank you very much. If you are new to this channel, please like this video if you like it at the end. <laughs> And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that bell icon to get notifications of whenever I post anything new. Um, if you or anybody else would like to um, support what I do and allow me to create more content for you, um, if you want a way of supporting what I do, head over to patreon.com. If you don't see anything there that you like, let me know and we'll see about adding something that you may be interested in. Um, so yeah, so let's open up Unity. Alright, so if you were here last week, um, we created a prefab and we changed some things around. Uh, as you can see, there's no more paddles here. Uh, that is because we are creating them on startup. Uh, the other thing we need to do as well is to have this ball here uh, to start on startup as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, open up C Sharp project. And as always, I have to do that. So let's head over to the match manager. We already have a notion of what a ball is. Before we can actually load it in, we have to make it a prefab. If you don't know what a prefab is, go and watch my previous tutorial, uh, which is progress. And you'll see what a prefab is and how we use it. Okay, so now we've got a prefab. Let's delete this guy, otherwise we're going to have two balls. <laughs> um, okay, so in initialize, after we initialize the player, we want to create a ball. So let's add another public void, create ball, right? And what are we going to do here? We are going to pretty much do the same thing as we did with the player. We are going to have a prefab right there uh, that we have to load in. And we just got to change this to ball and this to ball prefab. Uh, yes. Once we have that set up, we can go back here and actually do the same thing we did here. So we, instead of that, we do ball prefab. If it's null, we are going to make sure that we load the ball uh, from the resources folder, ball as a game object. Oh yes, I forgot it was a game object, so we didn't need uh, to do change that because last time we had an error um, so whenever we do that and if the ball prefab is not it is null uh, we're gonna throw an exception that will let us know what is happening uh, so we just need to say where we are now and it's create ball so okay now we have to create a new game object. Um, we're going to call it ball. And this is going to be the instantiation. Instantiate. And we're going to be passing the ball prefab. We're going to be setting the position to be vector 3.0. Uh, and quaternion identity. Once we do that, 
Um, that is pretty much all we need to do because we do not actually do we need to set up the ball we may want to do that actually get random so ba, 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 ba. let's call a public void setup as well here and let's do all of this right there, right? All right. So, all right. So now we just have to call that from the match manager, and we have to first check to, well, that we have the ball, like last time, and then get the ball script from the ball dot get component we're gonna get the ball script and then if the ball script exists we are gonna go and say ball script dot setup boom and we're done now we gotta do is call it and now we should have a ball um, being generated at the start of the match and we do so we can see that cool okay so um, if you weren't here last time we fixed the controls by adding them to the match manager and having the players instantiated and positioned according to the player uh, ID, right? Player one is on the left, and it uses the WASD keys or WS keys, and the player two is on the right, which it uses the up and down arrow keys. Now we're going to be focusing on later on. Um, we're going to be focusing on making sure that we have. Oops, Um, that we work in an a single player okay cool so this is what I wanted to see so if you remember last week we actually um, whenever we score five um, we actually are doing this here. So whenever we check the score, if it, um, if somebody won, uh, we call pl on player one, and this actually just reloads the scene. Um, so, and we lose everything. We lose all of the references that we had, right? Except for some reason, the first player paddle um doesn't which is kind of odd i would s i mean if everything else isn't there then you know um i would expect that not to be there but let's let's see if we can fix this uh in a timely fashion um So what I think we need to do is this, uh, not scenes, let's go to scripts and get our match manager. So we, uh, we are going to auto, like we're going to create this, right? Match manager and we're just going to pop it in there and we are going to do the following. Um, we're going to go into the resources and put our player paddle there and our ball there. And we're going to instantiate those, right? Um, 
we're gonna make sure that we have two players and that is pretty much it right so we don't we can go back into the code here and um, what we can do is since we're doing this uh, we don't need to call you know we don't need to get the prefab anymore right we don't need to load it from file since we're gonna be doing that through the inspector um, and I think what happened actually because nothing got reset um, I think it's because of this initialized maybe but no it should have also reset it probably mm, we can't really say for sure but let's try that right let's let's try how we have it here um, all we have to do now is just do this and okay so nothing is happening and let's see if it initialized it did not initialize at all so uh, we could do a little hack I guess well first of all let's move this guy to be not there because this is only the initialized thing is only going to get called if we are creating a new one right but since we already have it in there all we gotta do is just paste it here um, so that if we find it through this method um, it'll just check okay have I been initialized if I haven't then I'll get initialized so I think that was the issue um, so if we play it we should now see everything working properly um, let's try to make player two win again this boss is so slow all right one five okay so same thing happened Do, do, do. and this is player ID zero so I mean one not zero So we apparently create one of them, but it doesn't reset. So, okay, so instead of doing what we're doing currently, we're going to do something else now, okay? We are going to copy pretty much this guy. Is it this guy? Um... So we need to update the user interface. Um, we can go back here and just call a reset scores. Uh, we can reset the position in the Y direction for all players for each game well actually player paddle uh, 
player in players player dot transform position equals new vector three and we are just gonna copy the oh, the x position over put it on that and that's it there um we'll reset the ball so the ball transform position equals vector three zero right we're gonna reset everything pretty much um to be as if we were starting a new level um so what the only thing that needs to happen now is we need to tell the the um we need to do this we need to invoke that and what is it invoking uh let's see it was in here was it in here here okay there's it uh, no it wasn't here oh the goals duh so it was using the score panel ui dot update score ui right so we gotta call this um, update score UI, which is within the score panel UI, every time it resets. Um, the best way to do this would be through events, event systems and stuff like that, right? Um, but that's a little bit of a um, more, that's more of an advanced topic that I don't want to go through this. So you can see, you know, uh, one way of doing things. And then when you get introduced into the other thing, you'll be like, oh my God, that's so much, you know, easier. Um, so we got to call this what we can do is... we can tell the match manager since we have them here um we can just give them a pointer to this function right um so how would that look like so we would have a pointer up here maybe here we'll say uh, this probably cannot be serialized, but actually it can, because we just did it over there. Um, so we need Unity, actually custom events, and uh, and it's that. Um, on score update callback we'll say it's null and we just need a function right so we can say public void um, set on score you I update or unscore update UI or set score update callback. That's a better name. We pass in the custom event callback and we are gonna rename this guy. Well, actually, we're just gonna add UI between update and callback. We're gonna get this and do uh, callback. So then we can say whenever we reset the scores and everything else, as soon as we do that, we call this guy. So we invoke 
this guy um, we got to do it twice for each player so actually um, since we have a loop here we can just do that right so we get a uh, player dot do we can we get their ID not their instance ID so now uh, let's go to player paddle um, we do not have that but we can say okay get the um, player ID um, player just call it ID um, so we're gonna say get and it's in the controller dot player ID um, so we gotta return this and we do that so now we go back to match manager we'll just say player dot ID and we'll pass in the score which is zero right um, and that is it uh, before we actually do the call we got to make sure that it is uh, not damn it that it uh, it's not null right so we only do that if this thing is not null so cool so now here when we call this now we actually have something that we we can do this right um, so this is now useful and we can say uh, set this and all we gotta do is call the update score UI there um, we probably have to cast it to a custom events do we no is that too much cannot convert method to blah 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 well that's unfortunate uh, another way we can try to do it is instead of doing that function right we just do pretty much this but a public um and we just say set this work So it appears to be that we need a delegate. Serialized field, private, 
delegate um, on score update UI callback um, what is this So let's try this thing one more time, right? The public set on uh, score UI or update callback and this is a void and we pass in the delegate callback and We say on that equals callback. And then Let's consult with 
Google. Elegant with parameters. So it is delegates. Uh, where was I? Oh, public delegate void um, callback, and then I do player ID int. Maybe we don't need that. Damn it, what the hell? So, okay. There we go. So, that's what we want. <sighs> Call back. And then we just say. Call back, call back equal, uh, I think it's like plus equals call back. Um, and then we just say register call back, um, set up or score update call back, something like that. Um, and then we can also do remove this and then minus. Um, and then we can just believe. Do we have to iterate through everything? Or can we just call it? No, we can just call it. So we got player.id and zero because. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now this one, that instance, register, um, we can pass in now, I believe, the update score UI um, thing on start. And then um, we can also do like an on destroy method. Uh, and just call the remove. And we only want to do it once. Uh, otherwise, we would add a lot of the same functions a lot, like over and over again. Um, so this is kind of like an introduction to um, event systems, which we are pretty much, we created a function pointer, pretty much, which is our delegate void callback thing uh, that tells, you know, what kind of footprint uh, the function needs to have, which is the player ID and then the integer. It, the, any function that has that uh, signature, I guess you could call it, um, will be we will be able to call that from like any system, right? So um, now you wouldn't really create the event system like this. You would have its own thing, but um, it's similar. So we'll be looking at that maybe later on. Uh, and then this is the actual function pointer that we store to be able to call um, these functions, right? So now... Uh, once we like okay let's let's run it without it and see what happens right so you can see like why we need this so let's I think we just play 
Um, let's let someone win. So let's let player one win. Oh, damn it. I'm used to letting player two win. So let's let, let's let player two win, right? And you'll see that whenever it changes, um, whenever the um, we get to score five, you'll see that the user interface is not going to change, but everything else will. And and this is why we need that thing. Oh, damn it. One more. Cool. See, um, we reached five and somebody won. And, and, but the score is still the same. And now it changed back to zero, right? Um, what was this? Ball. That's interesting. Do we not have a reference to the ball? Let's pause that. We do not have a reference to the ball. Uh, are we not using that ball to create? Yeah, we're not. Okay, so let's uh, change this to object. Ball object. Um, and then this one will just nuke that part and we'll use that which is the one that we have up here we need that reference <laughs> okay so you saw why we need it um so let's re-enable it and you'll see the difference right oh what is this no reference exception ball dot move. What happened? Do we still not have it? Match manager, duh. It's ball object. That's why we don't have it. All right, so like we were saying, let's let player two win again, right? Uh, we could speed up the ball, maybe. Two. Three. Four. And there we go. Um, so for some reason, player two did not change. You know what? Let's do this. Let's let's make a new one. That says public void update score UI all. <laughs> so that we just need to pass in the score that we want to update it. Uh, and we just do um, we just call probably this
and we say okay uh, one and two are gonna be score right maybe we want that um, so maybe instead of registering this guy we register this guy um, and unregister this guy now the reason why we're getting an error here is because of the footprint which we just need that there and we need to fix this down here and boom um, it should be fine now and let's let's see if let's lower just lower this to like two for now so it doesn't take so long um, to you know win something um, so and we'll let player one win and everything should go back to normal but it didn't again why is that and we don't need to call it twice we'll just call it once um let's make this part of this right there Let's see, I saw attach debugger to Unity, so I'm going to try to attach it to it. Um, we need the instance, which is this guy. Okay. So now we're attached, right? And what we want to do in order for us to debug this is we want to see what happens here right whenever we win or someone wins so let's do that let's press play and we'll let someone win whoever wins and as soon as that case gets triggered which player one is gonna win actually no not yet whenever that case gets triggered um will it'll invoke this right now so okay so we got our watch window open um we want to see the scores is it score score list right so we got score list, we have two entries, and um, the raw view, static, um, empty array. Where is the damn? Uh, so can we do that? There we go. So. Or list one. There we go. So we got. Oh, so I guess. Yeah. Never mind. So we got this two scores, and they're both one and two, right? Um, player two, one. So if we go into here, um, we'll see that you know we. And I forgot to go in here. We have reset it that. And actually, we needed to check something else. We're resetting positions and that. So let's try it one more time. Because I kind of messed up. I went over it instead of into the function. There we go. So player one won this time. So F11. 
will take us into this function, right? And we'll see that it clears all the scores and it will we'll go in here, right? And this takes us to this function, um, which then it should be like, okay, player one, we're gonna reset your score value uh, to be that. And if we check, this guy now there it's zero right and that's two at the moment so we keep going and we go in it and it changes it to zero right so then we go in here, we change the position to be at the center of the screen for the player paddles, and we center the ball as well. Now, when we play it again and we pause it, why are these still saying the same thing? And let's check match manager, make sure that this didn't even change it oh no wait it did but um we scored one right now so that should be fine that's why that's one at the moment but yeah at the moment i'm puzzled and i am not really sure why that is Why is it not updating properly? <sighs> what we could also do since it's we see that it's changing here properly we could just instead of doing everything here or, or here um we could just say okay we're gonna check well let's first do that right let's delete that um but we want to check here who won and so here we add score. Um, and when we add the score, I'm going to say match manager. Uh, instance. Um, and we'll pass in what should we pass in? We'll pass in player one, maybe. We'll have to figure that one out. Uh, but we'll pass in a player and we'll pass in the score. Um, so, if somebody wins, we'll do here, maybe like a reset scores we'll do that and we have to stop this so it stops complaining um so actually 
we don't have to call this one there. We can just leave it like that. So it'll reset the score. Um, and what else? Reset the score, which we can get rid of that as well. Um, actually, let's just call this on player one, right? So we'll do that for both of these. Except that one. And this uh, two. Actually, um, yeah, it's going to be one here. And it's going to be two over here. Since those are the people that scored, so we're checking their score. Um, and so it'll, it'll reset everything, right? And then it should call this function, um, which it's not going to be that anymore. Um, it's going to be something else. So I guess here we can just say score is actually zero now, right? Uh, and then we'll pass it in there. Um, that should work because that's the only thing that seems to be working at the moment. Um, so let's get rid of this stuff that we had here for callbacks we don't need those anymore and we're gonna get rid of this as well we don't need this anymore and we'll try it again I have a feeling that this time it should work just fine. Why did it move me all the way over there? That's one. Oh, did, oh yeah, this thing shrunk. Cool. So it's working now. Now all we got to do uh, to the ball is um, delay it, right? Every time it starts. Um, so we kind of need states in a way. Um, so we're going to let um, match manager handle states. So let's put it to do here um, somewhere right to do um we need to have game states to know when we are loading a new level so that we could uh delay the ball for longer and give the players a count down and a heads up that a new match is starting um because right now it's like as soon as you win it's like oh another one and then it shoots the ball really fast at you and you're like what you don't have a, any chance at catching that properly, right? So that's what we're going to be working on next. Um, today was more of a bug fixing day, um, which we pretty much got everything squared away. It's running again. It's working fine. Um, and that is pretty much it.
So thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, thank you for the subscribers as well. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button. You will let YouTube know that this video is worth watching so other, people's can, other people can find it easier. Um, it'll let me rank better within the search algorithms, okay? Um, also, if you're new and you have, you like my videos and you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do so. Uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to get notifications of when new videos get uploaded. If you want to, uh, to help me or to, uh, I already said this and uh, words, you know, I'm having trouble with them. But if I can even think, Patreon, <laughs> go to patreon.com uh, forward slash Wolfers and you can support me there. If there's not a choice that you like there, uh, send me a message so that we can actually put something that you are interested for you to support. Uh, what I do um, through this we I'll be able to create content more regularly and more often um, and yeah thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time